Hello everyone. This is the last tutorial for ENGG 24308, Probability and Statistics for Engineers. In the previous lectures, we have already learned confidence intervals and hypothesis testing. Now let's consider another inferential statistics called regression, which is a method. To describe the nature of the relationship between two or more numerical or quantitative variables, in this tutorial we will focus on the simple linear regression, where only the linear relationship between two variables are considered. We always assume the data values are generated according to the simple linear regression model. Y is equal to beta zero plus beta one times x plus z. Well, the two population parameters beta zero and beta one are called y-intercept and slope, respectively. And the error term z is a random variable normally distributed with zero mean and constant variance sigma squared. And we further assume that the error terms associated with each observations are independent and identically distributed. The model can be visually illustrated in the figure, where the blue line with the slope beta one and y-intercept beta zero gives the expected value of y for each given value of x. According to the model, actual data points may not fall exactly on the line because of the error term z, as represented by the normal curves in the finger. We can see at each value of x i, the corresponding value of y i observed in the sample is a normally distributed random variable with mean beta zero plus beta one x i. And the variance sigma squared. The variance is at the same at all different values of x. The only thing that is changing is the mean of y at different values of x. And those different theoretical means of y are all falling on the blue line, which can be sort of given the linear relationship between x and y. Since the two parameters beta zero and beta one are typically unknown, so we use the sample data to find the estimated regression line. Given a set of sample values x one y one up to x n y n, we want to determine the linear relationship. By estimating the parameters y-intercept beta zero and the slope beta one of the blue line, in fact, there are many ways to do the estimation, but the common way is to define the least squares regression line, y hat equals to b zero plus b one x, which minimizes the sum of the squared errors. Or we call residues. Through the minimization, we can obtain the values of b zero and b one, where the estimated y-intercept b zero is the least squares estimate of beta zero, and estimated slope b one is the least squares estimate of beta one. If we do the minimization properly. Using calculus, we will see b zero is equal to the average of y minus beta one hat times the average of x, and b one is equal to the covariance between x and y divided by the variance of x. Professor Chen has spent a lot of time showing how to derive this. Formulas in the lectures, so I will omit the details here. These are estimates of parameters beta zero and beta one based on sample data. 
Next, let's see the distribution of the parameters. Recall our linear regression model. Y is assumed to have a linear relationship with X, with a derivation of a normally distributed random variable Z. One important concern is that if beta 1 is equal to 0, then the second term will vanish, and Y will not have a linear relationship with X, or the value of Y will not depend on S. We can see from the finger that no matter which value x takes, y follows exactly the same normal distribution. So, investigating the value of beta 1 is very important in a lot of practical situations. But beta 1 is a parameter, we don't know its value. So, we estimate it with the statistic beta 1 hat, which has been derived in class. Since all yi's are normally distributed, we conclude that beta 1 hat is normally distributed. Then, because the sample mean of yi, given x equals xi, is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 xi, substitute this into the expression of beta 1 hat, we can get the sample mean of beta 1 hat, which is exactly equal to beta 1. This implies that beta 1 hat is an unbiased estimate of beta 1. Next, we come to the estimate the sample variance of beta 1 hat. Since the variance of all yi's are equal to the variance of the noise random variable, due to the property of variance, we may obtain the variance of beta 1 hat, which is equal to sigma squared divided by the variance of x. Sigma squared is a parameter that we don't know. So the first step is going to be estimating sigma squared. We are going to estimate the parameter sigma squared with the statistic s squared, which is the sum of squared residues divided by n minus 2. And we call this s squared mean squared error. But why divided by n minus 2 here? Well, if we know the true values of the parameters, beta 0 and beta 1, we can use them to calculate our predicted value yi. Then, we will be able to use n in the denominator. But we don't know these values actually. So we have to use our sample data to estimate beta 0 and beta 1 with beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. When we use our data to estimate these two parameters, we lose two degrees of freedom. And so, we are dividing here by n minus 2. Then, to obtain the sample variance of beta 1 hat, we only need to replace sigma squared by its estimate s squared. We often want to test the non hypothesis that there's no relationship between x and y. Recall that our model is that y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus z. If the true value of beta 1 is actually 0, then the second term will drop out, and y will not have a linear relationship with x. So, this is a very common test in the real world, testing whether the slope is equal to zero. We could test another value if it's not if it's so desired, but that is not a question of interest. As often as testing the non-hypothesis 
that the slope is equal to zero. We use a regular t statistic. The t score is the estimate of beta one minus the hypothesis value of beta one over the standard error of our estimate, which is equal to beta one hat, which is b one over the sample standard deviation of beta one hat. We must pay attention to the degrees of freedom, which is n minus two. The same as the degrees of freedom of s squared. Substitute the values of b1 and s into t score. It appears that t is equal to square root of n minus two times r squared over one minus r squared. Well, r is the linear creation coefficient. This indicates that even with a fixed r, the t score will be large for a large n, such that it's easier to reject the hypothesis and accept the linearity. So we see r is a better measure of the strength of a linear relationship rather than the t score or p value. Then. Similarly, a confidence interval for beta one can be obtained as t value of half alpha with n minus two degrees of freedom times the sample standard deviation of beta one hat around b one. We have already shown how to estimate the parameters of regression line with both point estimates and confidence intervals. Next, we want to focus on the problems of estimating the theoretical mean of y at a given value of x equals x zero, and predicting a single value of y for a given value of x equals x zero. Which one of the two will be used in practice depends on the question of interest. Let's first consider the first one. The point estimate is obviously y hat of x zero equals to beta zero hat plus beta one hat times x zero. Since we have obtained in class that beta zero hat is equal to the average of y minus beta one hat times the average of x, substitute beta zero hat into the point estimate. The point estimate. Then becomes y bar plus beta one hat times x zero minus x bar. Because y bar is normally distributed, y hat of x zero is also normally distributed. The rest is to determine the mean and the variance of y hat of x zero. Based on the Gaussian distribution of y i, we easily conclude y bar follows a normal distribution with mean beta zero plus beta one times x bar, and the variance sigma squared over n. The distribution of beta one hat is obtained just now. Till now, we can say that. Y hat of x zero is normally distributed with mean beta zero plus beta one times x zero, and the variance sigma squared times one over n plus x zero minus x bar squared over the variance of x. Since the parameter sigma squared is unknown, we use the estimate s squared to replace it. As what we did just now. Then the confidence interval for the theoretical mean is within t value of one half alpha with n minus two degrees of freedom times sample standard deviation of y hat at x zero from y hat of x zero. 
Besides the interval estimate of the theoretical mean of y at half zero, we are sometimes interested in predicting a future observation for a given x zero. We consider the prediction error for the new observation, which is the difference between the observed value y x zero and its predicted value y hat of x zero. Since both the observed value and its predicted value are normally distributed, and the future value is independent of its predicted value, the prediction error should be also normally distributed. According to the distribution of the observed value y x zero and its predicted value y hat of x zero, and the properties. Of Gaussian distribution, we obtain the distribution of the prediction error. Then, finally, the prediction interval for a single value of y at x zero is t value of one half alpha with n minus two degrees of freedom times standard prediction error around y hat of x zero. The standard prediction error here is derived from the standard deviation of the prediction error by replacing sigma with s. Okay, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching and wish you a good performance in the final exam.